I'm Richard Threlfall and I'm the Global Head of Infrastructure at KPMG. And I'd like to take just a few moments to talk about what I think are some of the key trends in terms of future transport in the context of the connected city. From the perspective of the UK, but also recognising that these are trends that we're seeing throughout the world. And the three trends I'd like to highlight today are firstly peak car, secondly the rise of mobility as a service, and thirdly the contribution of transport reform to the achievement of sustainable economic growth and net zero targets. Let's start with peak car. The pressure that has been taking individuals out of their cars has been visible for some many, many years now. In fact, over the last 20 years, the number of teenagers in the UK who have been taking driving licenses has fallen by about 40% to only 29% today. And that trend continues downwards. Even amongst 21 to 29 year olds, the percentage has fallen from 75% to 63%. Now the UK, like everywhere else in the world, has been severely affected by the implications of the lockdown arising from COVID-19 in terms of individuals' use of transport. And as we come out of lockdown, we see many individuals in society understandably concerned about the health risks of using shared public transport. But I believe the macro trend is only going to continue one way. The car has had its day, and as soon as some of those health worries start to dissipate, I think we will continue to see the journey towards shared and public transport, continuing to outweigh private car use. The second trend I wanted to talk about is the rise of mobility as a service. Now in London, of course, we have over many years move towards what is now contactless ticketing using not just a particular smart card but also any credit or debit card on the machines and we're likely to see the desire to implement such systems accelerate rapidly again as a result of the health risks of handling money and tickets and the benefit of just being able to tap on and tap out. The UK has also this year started to roll out the bus open data network. And by the end of this year, all bus operators in the country will be required to upload their timetables to a single system. And from a few weeks later, to be able to download in real time the movements of all of their buses, as well as basic fare and other information, so that users can easily access and understand the options digitally. And these are just small building blocks on the road towards the adoption of mobility as a service generally. It's also been interesting to see the UK over recent weeks embrace the use of e-scooters, something that previously uh, we had been very nervous about. But again, as habits have changed through the last four months of lockdown, that is helping to accelerate change there too. And the final trend that I wanted to talk about is the contribution of future mobility systems to the attainment of net zero. I think it's hugely exciting that we have the option over the next few years to shift huge numbers of individuals out of polluting petrol and diesel vehicles into electric vehicles. And the UK has been relatively slow in this space compared to, for example, Norway, where last year nearly 50% of new car sales were electric, pure electric or hybrids. And indeed the percentage of pure electrics in that is now more than half of the total of those low emission vehicle cars sold. But we can see other countries starting to catch up too. The UK had set a date of 2040 as the point at which petrol and diesel vehicles will be banned, but the government's already announced that will be brought forward to 2035, and scientists are lobbying for it to be 2032. My personal belief is that we will very, very quickly reach the tipping point at which the economics are such that users all over the world demand electric vehicles, 
and indeed we've already seen the supply from uh, automotive OEMs accelerate dramatically in terms of the range and the capabilities of the cars that are on offer. The question is still, is that enough? I think one of the things that we are seeing as we come out of the COVID-19 pandemic is a greater realisation by businesses, governments and individuals of the vulnerability of society and a greater recognition of the risk that we all face from climate change. I think we are going to see governments all over the world resolve to act much, much faster in terms of the adoption of zero emission transport. In London, the mayor, of course, has adopted the world's first ultra low emission zone and has said that he wants 80% of all journeys in the capital to be by walking, cycling or public transport by 2041. Is it enough? Still, I suspect we will see countries start to compete with each other to become greener and greener in their transport provision. And personally, I can only say, I think that's a really, really good thing. Thank you very much.